Jones, so I'd like to commence the webinar. Ah, great. What, what are we going to do this afternoon? Well, I'm going to give an introduction and talk about the evolution of, the, of capsule base inhalers. I'm going to hand over to my colleague Mauro Citiero from Plastiape, who's going to talk about inhaler design. And then I'll finish up with just talking about hard capsules and how they've evolved to meet the challenge of use in dry powder inhalers. Why choose inhalation therapy in the first place? Well, it's got lots of very good positives. The active pharmaceutical ingredient is delivered to the site of absorption. You get enhanced by availability absorbed into the systemic circulation because it avoids first pass metabolism. Onset of action is faster for the a than for an API dosed orally. And the dose of API used for this purpose is often much lower than the oral dose. Why are we concerned with this? Well, what we're talking about is respiratory disease. And one thing you may have noticed by reading generally, it's a rapidly expanding disease area. And I've got an interesting quote on the screen from the FDA news from the 2nd of May, which shows that in this area, the expenditure is forecast to grow enormously in, in developed markets up to 2017. In fact, asthma COPD, as you see, is the fifth largest therapeutic class. And in, in the United States, the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute estimates that nearly 27 million people are affected by COPD. So it's a very, a very pertinent topic for discussion. What sort of APIs are available through capsule-based dry powder inhalers? I've got a very simple table here of products that are on the market currently and some, as you see, which are in clinical trial stages. So see the bulk of the uh, actives are for COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and asthma. And these are various sorts of beta-2 and, and agonists, short and long-term. There's corticosteroids, and there's combinations of these. Now, another disease state which is increasing and needs, needs better treatment is cystic fibrosis. And for these, most of the uh, drugs are either antibiotics or antimicrobials, or things like mannitol, which help to restore the airway surface liquids. And very recently, there's been a clinical trial performed, results were published, where they, they're actually using the in inhaled route for a systemic purpose. This is administering dopamine receptors for Parkinson's disease. Respiratory systems, there are three basic sorts of uh, systems. I got them very briefly mentioned on my slide. There are nebulizers, which administer liquids. There are meter dose inhalers, which are pressurized cans with suspensions or solutions of actives in, in solvents. And then there, are, then there are the dry powder inhalers, which obviously, as the name implies, contain dry powders. There are three basic sorts of these. Dry powders which use blisters to contain the unit dose, capsules to contain the unit dose, or reservoir systems where you have a bulk, you have a bulk of material, and the and the dry, dry powder inhaler dispenses small quantities. So all these have got advantages and disadvantages. And so today I'm going to focus on we're going to focus on hard capsule-based devices. We want to get a better understanding of the properties required of hard capsules and how the design of dry powder inhalers makes the best use of capsules. Let's go back in history and think, where did all this start? Well, the first capsule-based dry powder inhaler was developed by a company in the UK called Fison's in the 1960s, where they made a device called a spin inhaler, which you see on the screen. And inside this, they used spin caps, which are capsules filled with an active sodium chromoglycate, which was used for the prophylactic treatment of asthma. Obviously, they had certain challenges which they solved here. They managed, in this case, to use the capsule to carry the unit dose. And this contained micronized active in an ordered mix with lactose to enable it to be machine filled. And also then, to allow the micronized active to detach from the carrier during inhalation into the lungs. One of its attractions was a simple portable device which could puncture capsules and so reduce the dose 
of powder into the patient's inspirational airstream when they used it. Just look what the device was. It's a very basic device. You see on, on, on the right-hand side of the screen, you, I've got pictures of the parts. So it's a two-part device. The top part is, contains the mouthpiece, and inside the mouthpiece there's a spindle on which it's a, a plastic device which has got some impeller blades and a cup at the end. And this sits on a spindle which is at a slight angle to the normal. The other part of the device contains the needle. So the two parts are screwed together. The outer gray, gray sleeve is, is pushed forward, and in doing this, this pushes the pins and to puncture the capsule. This outer sleeve is then pushed back. The needles spring apart, and then the mouthpiece is put in the patient's mouth, and, and they inhale. This causes the impeller to whir rapidly, and because it's at an angle, it, it vibrates, and the powder is sucked out of the capsules and is drawn into the patient's lungs. Thank <laughs> you.